All right, I'm excited to be with Alice Carolina today. So she is founding a movement called The Ethical Move. And when she reached out to me and I looked at the website, I'm like, okay, yeah, we're gonna be doing things together. Um, uh, I'll just, uh, well, Carol, uh, Alice, I'm gonna let you, you know, say a lot about yourself. Well, first of all, hello, thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so when I looked at this, I'm like, ah, this is, for those of you who have ever heard of B Corp, um, you know, uh, sort of the standard for businesses to uh, do things that are better for like the environment and for society, et cetera. B Corp certification is quite, quite well known and popular among um, sort of uh, green or sustainable businesses now. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of like the, the future B Corp of, of the authentic marketing, ethical marketing industry. So it's exciting for me to be able to uh, interview you, Alice, uh, before, before you get too big for me to interview you. <laughs> so, so, uh, let's hope. I mean, we have great. a common cause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let, let's hope that one day uh, you'll, you'll turn down my interviews because you're too big. That, that's, let's hope we get sure. there. Let's, isn't all, I'll always okay. be able to point to this one and say, hey, look, <laughs> I was one of the first to, to see the vision. So welcome, welcome, and uh, let's you. tell people about the ethical move. You know, you're, you're, uh, we're, we're just starting out here, and um, you know, I, I've been essentially trying to, to bring authentic marketing to the world for uh, since at least 2015, 2014. You know, I've been kind of, kind of um, uh, raising the banner for this, uh, but you're doing this in a very organized way now, <laughs> with a you know, future you know seal of pledge of approval, seal of approval kind of thing. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited to, to hear, um, well, uh, there's a lot of ways we, we inter intersect with our values, et cetera, but maybe you could start with what kind of inspired you to get going with the ethical move? Yeah, yeah well, thank you. That's, uh, it's funny you should mention B Corp. That's actually one of the, one of the actual inspirations for it. Um, so when I was 18, <laughs> this is a sort of a long, like long back moment in time, uh, I lived in Bolivia for a few months uh, in La Paz. And uh, I'm originally from Switzerland and it was quite the culture shock, uh, which I didn't really recognize at the time. Um, but the thing that actually really um, dug deep sort of into my soul was the insane poverty and the insane inequality. Um, that were, it was visceral, it was every day, it was in your face, and your every sense was basically inundated by this sheer just injustice. Um, and we had already, in my family, we'd already, already um, talked about um, various sort of ways in which the world was working or not working, so um, I definitely had a keen eye for it as well already. Um, but I kind of feel like that was a catalyst for me thinking, okay, now we need to do something. I need to do something. I had already, we traveled to other places before where there was, you know, inequality in your face, but nothing really like living in it and breathing it every day. Um, and so I kind of went on a quest to find the best relief work organization that I could join um, or, you know, some way to join the efforts in whatever way I could. Um, and I kept falling short because I kept feeling like, well, if we build that well, do we know what's actually going to happen after? If we just bring a bunch of rice, is that really going to be a sustainable solution anyway? So I kept, you know, spinning my wheels and not really finding a place for myself. Um, and then now, years later, um, I entered the online world with my business, um, specifically branding, which obviously has a very strong marketing, um, you know, attachment. So I all of a sudden saw this just crazy, crazy um, use of tactics and all of these ways that that people are trying to shove um, products down people's throats and services uh, in ways that I thought, wait, that's actually really not. Um, anyway, it just didn't seem like it, none of it felt good. Um, and it all felt like, well, we know this, don't we? Like, we know that this is not good, right? <laughs> um, and so where, where the link is between the two uh, was because I, um, I went and studied graphic design back in Switzerland before I even went to Libya. And I studied manipulation. We had my mother teaches communication. Uh, and so 
has taught communication all her life. So we had had that conversation in our house, in our family all the time about how you communicate, what, what is the sender and what is the receiver's um, responsibility and how do, we, how do we connect and what's important in terms of relationship um, between the two and you know, feedback loops and any sort of tactics. Um, and what was fascinating to me, it kept going with, um, learning how to use the right color for the right, you know, if you use red for this thing or green for this thing, that's how you can influence people. I just got sick of it. And part of why I ended up in Bolivia is because I actually couldn't believe in it anymore. I couldn't believe in being part of the cheat code, you know, being a designer that would then make things that would persuade people to buy based on tricking the mind. So years later, um, I went and studied interior design. Uh, I kind of got disillusioned by the whole industry, so I left it, came back from a different angle um, and studied interior design because I wanted a 3D aspect to design. It wasn't that I wanted to be an interior designer. Uh, but what I learned was uh, in commercial um, studies, uh, how to, you know, where to put the shelves so they're not too far apart, not too close together, and what height do things go, oh yeah, and then I, I did this whole uh, marketing positioning communication course, well, certificate college as well, uh, where um, I'm jumping all over the place and noticing just all the places where I studied manipulation to the nth degree, like where, what are point of sale products? Where do they stand? How, how does it feel? What is the scent in a place? What is the music? Um, geotagging, uh, being in a bus and, and, and seeing an advertising for the, I don't know, shop that's right outside the bus store, uh, the bus stop. Um, all of this combined just made me feel like I, I don't want to have any part of it. And I can't believe how much we're just being influenced on every level at all, all the time. And when I, I enter the online world, yeah, go on. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, I'm getting chills from, from hearing you say these things because, um, <clears throat> You know, to me, it's it's really the age-old idea that, you know, the, the powerful uh, are always trying to control the masses, uh, and if they can control the masses, and by they, I mean, you know what, just like you said, communication, right? All of us, at one time or another, are in that position of, of, of power. I mean, even in a single relationship, even in a single conversation, for example, and it's like, it's like the you know the 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 wealthy and the powerful, they 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 know. Hey, if I could if I can use advertising or or manipulation to control the masses, then I can keep my power and grow my power and and et cetera et cetera. And and of course, you know, uh, marketers learn from those tactics and strategies and think, well, that's how they got there. So that's how we are. That's what success success is to become rich and exactly. powerful, <laughs> you know. And yeah. so, well, of course, we're going to learn these tactics so that we can also become, you know, rich and powerful without a, without questioning that goal, right? Without questioning Absolutely. what success means. But yeah, go Absolutely. ahead. Absolutely. Or what what is actually the end goal? If it's not success, isn't it like health relationship? family yeah. like, right what right. what is the point well, really and that's in the what end, i'm saying right? maybe yeah. maybe success needs to be redefined so that it's not about accumulation Absolutely. of wealth and control you know and but but yes can, can success be you know so it's so interesting that just yesterday i was i i was listening to a podcast by um by Andrew Yang, he was one of the presidential candidates uh, mm -hmm. here in the here in the states, and he he's ha he has a new podcast now, and he was interviewing Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter and Square. Um, right. You know, a guy with a lot of power, but 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 Jack Dorsey is actually one of the more mindful ones because he he said he says he's a he said, I think everything is connected, and so if mm -hmm. someone else is suffering, eventually, it, either I'm suffering now or eventually I will be suffering too. Yes. And I was like, that's it. It's like, that's what success yeah. means is to see the connections and say, no, it has to be everybody uh, needs to be on, on a path toward yeah. health and well-being. But, but please, you, you, were, you were just about to start talking no. about the online. <laughs> <laughs> so no, ahead, the, the catalyst, I guess, was once I had, like, I had learned all of those tactics and I, knew, I recognized them to be unhealthy. Um, and most of all, what I knew about them was that the link back to my story about Bolivia was the inequality 
doesn't just happen. It's not something that is doomed or the way that it is forever. Inequality happens at the moment where we don't care about, like we were just talking about, don't care about the end part, like the person at the very end of the, of the chain, I suppose. Um, and not just like beyond fair trade, beyond B Corp, I feel like there is a link missing, which I actually personally see as the linchpin, which is why I started this to begin with. The linchpin of consumerism, let's say, as a whole, to me is the fact that we are completely addicted and we are completely in a cycle of addiction with what we want, what we buy, what we need, what we think we need, um, the, fee, the existential dread of not having enough scarcity, all of those you know, mindset questions around success and abundance and all of these things. What does it actually mean? We were born to want in this society since I'm assuming, I don't know, I think in the 20s they first started with proper psychological tactics. Um, <clears throat> so basically a few generations now have been completely inundated by wants and needs that don't actually exist. And so where, where we marketers come in is we create those wants and needs. It's not that they are intrinsic. It's not when I, I live on a little island right now, I don't see a, a store for clothes. I don't want to buy them. I don't even, you know, if I'm in downtown Vancouver, I will want to, I don't know, oh, that's a cool coat. That's some, it's just obvious. Like it's, I've studied this all my life and I cannot, absolutely cannot keep myself from wanting things when I see them or being influenced by this, even though I know exactly that $9.99 is a charm price and it is just there to, you know, make it look cheaper. I still fall for it. I can't, my, I can't, I don't have enough control over my brain because we're bypassing it with marketing. Yes. And yes. that is where the ethical move started when I saw online that all of these tactics were being used and like in the sleaziest old timey way possible. And, and like it wasn't taught. even covert. Like well, it was being, being taught, taught, like you're supposed to do like this. Like this is the right thing. Like you need to make your price 297 instead of 300 because that, that's going to make more sales. And yes, I agree, it will, because you're literally bypassing the functioning conscious part of someone's brain. But what I'm arguing is, if you can't sell your product at 300 bucks, what's the point? Should the product even exist? Maybe you need to go do some soul searching, you know? That is a really good <laughs> And that's back to like what you were saying yeah. about, about the actual definition of what is important. Um, and this is why the ethical move exists is because I believe the linchpin is marketing. I, I actually think that manipulation and coercion and persuasion is, is the linking factor that we don't take into consideration because it is seen as something good. And I, honestly, whenever I, I have people sending me articles all the time, oh, look, here's some more tactics. Here's some more things. I'm like, yeah. I, and they're always touted as positive. And I just can't, just based on my history, I can't believe it. I just can't be with it. And so eventually I got so fed up with it after like two, three years in business, maybe more. I just had it. I felt like, you know what? I, this is, it's not good. And I can be as outspoken as I want, but unless people have a reason or a benefit or a, maybe not even necessarily a benefit, but unless they have a goal to push for, they will not change things. Well, like you said, it, well, right? I mean, the, the, the point of this, I mean, well, why I brought in B Corp, right? Like, unless they have a standard, you know, unless they have, exactly. they have clear <clears throat> guidelines and they understand why the guidelines are there. Um, and the guidelines are kind of like, uh, I think for several groups of people, I mean, for one group of people, it'll be enlightening. Like, oh, I didn't even know, exactly. you know, <laughs> that for, for example, yeah. for, 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 you know, for, for B Corp, Oh, I didn't even know that businesses could be run in this way. I just thought that businesses were just naturally polluting and naturally bad Absolutely. for society, or whatever. Oh, I didn't know. But it's like for one group of people, it's yeah. that. And another group, it's like, you know what? I've been wanting to do that, but I've been scared because no one else is doing it. But now there's a bunch of people doing it. So now I'm going to join and we'll all be stronger together. You know, and then for and then yeah. for a third category, I, I imagine it's like people who are like profiting off of manipulation. They're like, damn. Yeah. You know, now we have to try to try to try to be better, you know, and well, and, time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do think it's funny. Um, I also think what we what we forget sometimes is the role of the consumer in it, like our responsibility to the people that we're making things for or that we're you know, creating our services for. 
our consumers are literally inundated by our choices and tactics. So if we say we care about our people and we want to help people and you know all those vague big picture visions that people have, I sorry, I just want people to get a vision that means something, you know? Um, everybody wants to help people. But if you say that, if that's your vision, how on earth do you justify tricking their beautiful minds? That to me, that doesn't, it doesn't register to me. It, it just seems like, and if you don't know, like you said, there's tons of people that just don't know. A countdown is something that creates urgency, which is a tactic, which is bad, in my opinion. You know, that's where we put the stake in the ground. You know, yeah. we say it's bad. It's not a good thing. It's, um, I think, I mean, the foundation of it is awareness, right? Like mindfulness. Yep. And it's like, without the mindfulness of how is my system being influenced when I see this and then and then do I like that kind of influence? Do I, mm. d d d is it, is it taking my free will away from me or giving me more agency? And, <clears throat> exactly. and if it's taking away agency from me in a way that I don't, you know, that I don't like, am I, am I going to do that to other people? And it's like that yeah. this connection, people just don't see that connection. And that's why Absolutely. you're bringing this, you bring this forward and say, wait a sec, you know, notice what's happening. Yeah. Notice that it's not going to create a better world. And, and this whole thing, I, I, I often talk about how, um, people forget, or people, people, usually we think, well, oh, this is a means to an end. Mm. Like I'm, I'm doing this so that I can help people. Yes. <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing this yeah. so that I can, that, that they can be helped. But we, we, we forget, like if we really dig into the means and the ends, it's like mm. a lot of times we realize, well, wait a second, the means yeah. is actually what's creating a world and the end it's like you might never ever get to the end but the means <laughs> itself the process <laughs> right yeah. the process is always happening yeah. and it's like how we do things is everything you know? absolutely it's kind of like i mean this is very dramatic but let's say starting a war so we can have peace it, you know it's that that example. idea of of yes. of what i don't actually yeah. as a brander you don't need any of that if you have some, if you have some sort of, how can I say this? If you know who you are and you know what you create and you, and you create it well, uh, let's say your product or your service has meaning and has value and benefits the world and benefits the people that it's meant for, <clears throat> then your, you will automatically have a, a platform that you don't need to, you don't need to trick people. It's just a fallacy. It is created by the same system that tells you that you need this new beauty product because you're not pretty enough or you have lines because you're getting older. You know, the normal life. <laughs> um, anyway, I could go on tons of tangents. I just can't even believe how much we get inundated by, by these messages of telling us we're not enough. And the same thing happens in the online world with marketers telling other people how to market unethically because that's what needs to happen in order to keep the machine going, right? right? So this whole cycle can only continue if we continue the cycle. So the, the influence that we have as small businesses right now online, I think is growing significantly. We have numbers, but we're not, we're not big corporations, but we're, we're small and we're a lot, there's a lot of us. And I feel like this is sort of maybe we can at one point you know tip the scales and then all of a sudden hopefully <laughs> apple will also get off the 999 train that they're on and you know i think amazon has it a little bit but it's not as bad um the the idea behind the ethical move was really to create sort of well to create a badge on your website that says i market ethically i market honestly you will not get lied to by me on this page or anywhere else, wherever you find the badge. And the reason being is that it's actually funny. I just talked to one of my contributors, Caroline, um, who is one of your number one fans who actually was one of the main reasons why I connected with you because she loves you so much. Oh, Caroline um, Leon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's wonderful. one of our I'm contributors. Of She's incredible. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know, right? So she actually um, mentioned to me that there are people who need some sort of ground to stand on to even sell 
because they feel so bad about using the tactics, so they do nothing. <laughs> and then nothing goes out, right? So it should be empowering. It should be empowering for both sides with the end result of creating what I call a flat marketplace, where we just say, here's a product, here's a price, here's the reasons, do you want it? And then the other person can go, oh, okay, let me talk to my friends. <laughs> I don't know. Just you know, or yes, actually, those are exactly the justifiable conscious reasons that I would like to buy this. Um, and then we're done. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yes, yeah. it might not create the scale that we want with, you know, if you have a little thing, a little window on a page blop, pop up with like, Melissa bought it, Jenny bought it, you know, like all of those little, Social and I'm proof, like, yeah. I, Instant, yeah, but yeah. also, also those little pop-ups that make you go, oh, another person bought it. So this must be a good product, you know? Like yeah, it's, just, it's, it it's, that. yeah, uh, it's, it's all that is basically engineering, uh, yeah. the, the, the persuasion of the other mind. Absolutely. With, it's, it's like, yes, it's like, it's like, I better buy this because of all these other signals and not because of the product itself is what I actually want and need. That, Absolutely. That, that, that. <laughs> right. Have I thought about what gap I'm actually trying to fill with the thing that yeah. I'm buying? Yeah, you know, yeah. maybe I haven't, yeah. but if this keeps popping up in my face and I can't really make that choice. Yeah. So part of, part of what I also want to create is actually, um, I have talked to B labs to one of the person there, um, people there. And we and have talked the, about the, the, the creators of the B Corp of the uh, B Corp. Standard. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. So if all goes well, uh, we can be part of the certification for a B Corp as well wow. down the road. Yeah. Um, all that to say, it is quite a lot of work to create a standard. So it might take a bit or a lot of people either way. Um, so, yeah. So tell so yeah, share with us what um, <clears throat> those of us watching, how can we get involved? Uh, you know, you, you've given us a bit of the vision of what's going to be possible for this. Yeah. How, how can we get involved? Um, we actually have a contribute page on our website. Well, first of all, pledge to the ethical move. Pretty simple. Uh, the first pledge that we've created is um, changing all your prices to round numbers, um, not having any charm pricing. And the reason why we chose this pledge is because it is the most obvious black and white, you know, yeah. this is manipulative, this is not. Yeah. Choose your path. Um, so pledge there. We are actually currently creating a set of principles around it. So it's going to take a different shape where you're actually pledging to the movement as a whole and there's a bunch there's going to be a lot of different tactics that we suggest you don't do anymore um, there will be very blatant and obvious and clear kind of like charm pricing um, but they will be connected to certain things like transparency or um, you know responsibility all of our values that you basically see in their little logo wheel um, and then there's a contribute page where you, we have everything from being an actual member of our team uh, where you take on a little part uh, of the whole because we all can only carry so much as individuals. Um, and then there's, uh, we just started, uh, Caroline actually just started the Medium publication. So we are going to be wanting people to contribute with their articles and thoughts about things. Um, then there's, uh, yeah, there's tons of ways to connect with us uh, or just let us know your opinion, your thoughts, what you see, what tactics you're tired of, because we, we can only see our sliver of the internet. We, we don't know what other things are out there. I just heard about, you know, empathy, something, something being a new tactic that people are touting. Um, so anything new that you see that you feel like should be part of our knowledge base, uh, include that. Um, That's so Share cool. us, yeah. like us, you know, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you, this is a this is a very it's a it's a huge vision it's a long term vision. Um, yeah. You haven't mentioned anything about a financial contribution to to the ethical move. Uh, what is and I of course as a business coach I'm always concerned about the finances of other people yeah. and making sure they're sustainable. So do you uh, how are you going to sustain it financially? Maybe you have your own work and and mm. we can we can you know use your work or what what is what is yeah anything you want to say about that. Well, currently I'm carrying any sort of, of the tech or the subscriptions or any of the things that need to happen uh, for the ethical move just because I care about it so much that there's no other way. Um, we have thought of about a few different avenues. We haven't quite reached the point where we, where we sort of, we're still in the like pledge phase where we kind of finance seems to be like a down the road kind of project. So what we're thinking is either uh, creating a Patreon page or just 
straight up donations just so we can actually pay the people for their time. Uh, I think that is my main concern right now because uh, the contributors that we have uh, and that we've had have just put in so many hours um, and it would be really nice to be able to um, to at least, you know, have their paid work not have to take a backseat for unpaid work. Um, and then, of course, I am financing all of it at the moment. So and my then, services. Yeah, your, your services. <laughs> you, you do branding. Is that right? Yes. Slow branding. Oh, um, slow branding. Nice. nice. Yeah. Authentic I don't branding. really believe in the fast. Yeah. And what's your stuff. website? Uh, well, the ethical move, first of all, we want to make sure people know uh, it's www.vethethicalmove.org. And I'm just going yes. to share my screen real quick so that people can see it. Um, yeah. just to kind of make a, uh, make a branding impact there. Um, so there you go. <laughs> the ethical move, www.theethicalmove.org. And, you know, you could, it's, you know, it's very nicely, nicely built thus far, actually. Um, there's the pledge right <laughs> there you. and, you know, basically changing your price, our prices from manipulation prices, uh, to round numbers. Um, yeah. Awesome. And then, uh, and then, you know, you, the contribute page has, uh, you know, these different ways to, to get involved. I mean, right now, this is the beginning of a movement. So, you know, yes. those who, those who participate right now can, can really shape this quite a lot. Um, yes. I would suggest also that you should have a, have a, have a Twitter presence too. Um, we hashtag. have an account. <laughs> Okay, yes. Cool. Cool. So yeah, that's if gonna, you that's are a count. Twitter pro and you want to be part of it, we yeah. all don't know Twitter well enough to be yeah. able to do it well. But you have, so you that's have, maybe course, a call out. You have yeah. Insta. You have Facebook. You should definitely have a YouTube. My recommendation. You should definitely have a yes. LinkedIn. So yeah, <laughs> yes. I think I think I think we should YouTube, have a podcast. LinkedIn, we should have a magazine. Podcast we as well. Have... <laughs> totally. But yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I'm yes, very yes. much so on board that's, with all of those all, things. That's all. That's that's all coming. That's all coming. And then and then what about your own site, Alice? My own site is alicecarolina.com, um, Carolina with a K. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. This is so cool. I'll have to check that Thank out. Thank you. I haven't actually seen your site yet. So there you go. Creative strategy and branding. All good. As, as with every designer, I'm completely reworking it right now. But that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. that's typical. <laughs> that's beautiful. It's beautiful thus far. Awesome. Well, um, I will put Thank the you. links in the notes of the video. Thank you so much for, for your work and your passion. Absolutely. Your Thank you yeah. for your time. Yeah, yeah this is great. Thanks, Alice.